Hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome to this new video on the Ashes tutorial series. Um, in this video we're just gonna see some of the parameters that we can change in Ashes, uh, namely these buttons here that are on the top ribbon. Okay, okay let's get started. Um, this is just the onshore template that we used in the previous video as well, and right now I'm using version 3.16. If you have an earlier version, you might not have all these buttons. Well, it doesn't matter, just ignore the things that I will talk about that you don't have. Okay, so, well, in order to get started, I can just start the simulation here. This is something that we saw last time. And, uh, well, I can just see what th this first button does. So, if I leave my mouse here, I see that it says Displacement Plus. And this thing here is just a visualization, so if I click it, if I click it a lot of times, what I see is that my turbine gets uh, much more deformed than it was before. This is just visual a visual visualization thing. This is not the actual simulation. So this is just so that we can see things a little bit better. Um, and the same way that I can increase it here, I can decrease it in this uh, with this other button. So what these next buttons here do is kind of the same thing, but with the loads. So if I look at these arrows here, when I increase the loads, when I increase the visualization of the loads, I see that these arrows increase. And again, this is just visualization. The actual loads in the simulations don't change at all. But this can be handy when you're uh, when you're wanting to see loads that are too big or too small. The next one here, this is just to toggle on and off the visualization of the loads. And this button here, that's just the wireframe mode. So if you click it, you just see, instead of having a 3D uh, visualization of the turbine, you have you just see the wireframes. Okay, I'll just come back to the 3D visualization because this one is obviously much cooler than the previous one. The next button here is just to center your turbine again on the screen. So this is useful if you, know, if you just move your turbine and kind of lose it. Then you can just press this one and here you have it again. The next one that I have here, that's the display settings dialog. If I click on it, I just open this new window and this is a series of things that I can uh, visualize, visualize. All these here are just loads. So for example, here right now, I see that I'm looking at the thrust and torque components. If you don't know what these are, well, you definitely should. So go do your homework, um, but I could select I could unselect this one and choose not to see them and see instead the lift and drag, for example. Or I could select to see both and so on. There's a, yeah, there's different options. This is the onshore template right now, so I don't have any hydrodynamic loads, but if I did, I could select which ones I want to visualize with this, uh, these boxes here. So these things are just pretty straightforward. Just uh, try them on with different templates. And if you have any doubt, of course, just leave us a comment. The next things that we can see here, that's other things that you could choose to visualize or not. For example, I could, you know, want to see the ground or not, so I just click here, or the wind direction, so this just tells me in which direction the wind is coming. Just try these things and you'll figure out what they do. Okay, so the next, okay, these next buttons uh, are a little bit trickier, so this one here, I'm not going to talk about it now, because this will only become useful when we start importing blades. Um, so we'll do that in a in the next video. This one here is actually the one that I wanted to talk about today. So I'll just leave it for uh, for the end. This is again something that I'm not going to talk about in this video because this deals with air force and uh, polars, and we'll make another video about this. So then we'll talk about what this does. And this is just some information about the model. So you know you can just click and see that you have some some data about the about the turbine about the model that you're using some finite element uh, data and so on okay but yeah so as i said this one here is the one that i want to i want to talk about so when i open it when i click it i open the analysis parameters dialog i can see here that there are different categories uh, well again if i had an offshore template i would have hydrodynamics but yeah this is not so relevant there's lots of little things here. I'm not gonna go through everything at all because it's yeah because there's a little bit too much. But there's a few things that I wanted to to talk about. The first one is this uh, this category here. That's initial conditions, 
and uh, what this does is to specify uh, which state the wind turbine is in when you start the simulation okay so these are the default values right now i can see that this says 10 rpm okay i can just restart my simulation so if i go to my to the sensor list here and i check what the rpms is what the rpm is like i double click and i get my graph and when i start the simulation i see that the first value of the rpm was 10 meters per second okay of course there is some transients afterwards uh, this is some simulation stuff if you were getting results you would have to wait until these have disappeared because uh, before getting va valuable results but if i start if i let my simulation go i start at 10 and then the um, the value becomes what it should be depending on the wind speed so you know if i decrease the wind speed for example if I set it to something like I don't know, seven meters per second then the rpm decreases but this is just the initial value okay and you can see that you know if i select zero for example then when i start my simulation i will just uh, start at zero rpm and then of course because there's a little bit of wind then the rpm is going to be increasing until it reaches a, a steady state okay so yeah, this is a uh, pretty straightforward again so you could change you could choose an initial value for the rpm you could do the same thing for the pitch angle you could do the same thing for the azimuth angle right now zero means that when i start the blade is pointing upwards but i could choose yeah something different and um, here i selected rpm but you could be change the TSR or the tip speed instead. All this is pretty straightforward, just again go ahead and try it. So this is actually quite relevant for the next thing that I'm going to show you. Okay, So if I go to this analysis category, the first subsection that I have here is general. And here the first thing I could change is dynamic is the analysis type. So right now it's the default value is dynamic because that is that is kind of what happens in real life. Okay. Dynamic is the is the situation where everything, you know, interacts all all the parts interact with each other. The the loads uh, have an effect on the structure and so on. You can always leave the mouse here and see what the tooltip says. But I'll let you read this, and I, I'm going to try to explain what the other stuff does. So this one here, if you choose loads only, that's a little bit more complicated. So you know, stay with me for a second. Loads only means that the loads are actually not affecting the structure, okay? So it basically means that Newton's second law is not applied. So the way the way this affects our simulation is that if I apply this, when I start now my simulation, so if you remember, yeah, I set my initial RPM to, to zero, okay? So no, even though the even though there is wind the turbine is not speeding up it's staying at zero rpm and that is because i selected the option where the loads are not affecting the structure so of course i have loads i can see them here if you don't see them you can increase their value here so of course i do have loads but these loads are not making the turbine rotate because the loads do not affect the structure and the loads do not create an acceleration in the in the object which is what newton's second law tells you that the loads should do okay i hope that this is more or less clear if it's not you can just uh, leave us a comment or experiment with this and hopefully you'll you'll end up understanding how this works this can become quite handy when you're studying different like parts of your turbine and uh, you'll probably yourselves uh, discover cases where this is useful but i'll just go back to dynamic because that's like the real thing the next thing that we can see okay I will, I will just go back to an initial uh, condition of 10 rpm but the next thing that we can see here is flexible parts so flexible parts you could you could select that all the model is flexible or that only the nacelle and the tower are flexible so if you select this option here well flexible nacelle and tower that means that the blades are stiff that the blades are rigid so when I apply this, if I start my simulation, it doesn't look very different, but if I increase the, I will just remove the loads here, the visualization so we can see it better. But what happens here, if I increase the displacement, so this is the first thing that we saw in this video, 
I see how the tower is bending backwards, but the blades are not moving at all, okay? And that's because the blades are stiff. There's uh, different situations where this might come handy, you'll probably find that yourselves. Uh, it definitely speeds up the simulation a lot, not to have to calculate the, the deformations and the, the values of the loads on the deformed position, but these are just some of the things that this is useful for. Okay, I'll come back to the to all, which is of course the more realistic situation. Next things, well, the time step that's pretty simple. That's uh, you can you can select yourself the time step. You can leave it calculated by ashes, or you can define it yourself. So, for example, if I want the time step to be 0.05, then you can see and I apply. Then you can see here that this now I can decrease the speed here. That this is moving with 0.05 time step every time. Okay, so again, this is straightforward. And well, this the real time is uh, is this value here. That's something that I mentioned in the previous video, so I won't go through it again. Okay, I can say, well, I'm not gonna go into too many details about this stuff. Um, I think if you if you get into this, if you get into that, you'll probably have to, uh, you probably can just read the tooltip or ask us how thi these things work. I can just mention the the ramp up is just uh, something that we need in this type of simulations because so I can we'll probably be able to see it on this here. This is the sensor for this element. You see that when I click it this becomes red. So this if I try to show the actual force here, so that's the force force in the vertical direction. When I start my simulation I see that this starts at zero and then starts increasing, increasing, and then reaches its uh, its actual value, and that's what this ramp up thing does. Okay, so the ramp up lasts for three seconds, and that's that's what you see here. The load has been ramped up until it reaches its, its value at three seconds, and then you know it just goes normal. Okay, yeah, I can apply and start again, and uh, okay, there is ma there are many more things here, but I don't want to go. I'm not going to go through all these things. This is the conversions, convergence of the finite element software. This we saw already. And these are some aerodynamic uh, parameters that are a little bit more advanced. So in future videos where we teach you more about aerodynamics, we will probably tell you what these are. But for the time being, you just if you know what they are, you just should know that you can find them here in Ashes. And otherwise, if you don't know what these are, just ignore them for the time being. And uh, okay, I think these are the main things that I wanted to talk about in this video. So, well, as always, if you have questions or things that you don't understand or that you would want to have explained a little bit more in detail, just leave us a comment. And uh, if not, well, thanks for watching this and see you in the next video.